So what we've been describing so far is just a very quick and, to be honest, quite superficial overview of what is in the first two days of the biogeometry training, the level one training. Now let's talk about the level two training. The level two training lasts for three days and it is devoted to giving the student practical hands-on skills in detecting, measuring, and manifesting the most beneficial energies. And that includes learning how to transmute detrimental energies into beneficial. So after the student understands the framework that we're working in in the first two days, then the rest of the training is hands-on work to do practical things for the rest of one's life. Very important concept for this practical work is the concept of resonance. Resonance is normally described in terms of sound. So that, for instance, there's often the description of the way that if you get two tuning forks that have the same shape or are tuned to the same frequency, and you strike one by bringing it next to one that is not struck, the second one will also begin to vibrate. In other words, there will be a resonant connection between the first tuning fork, which is vibrating, and the second, which has not been struck, but with the same energy quality to it, the resonance will also allow it to vibrate. In other words, vibrations can be linked between things that have a similar energy quality. It's an absolutely essential concept in Egyptian biogeometry. Our awareness can help to bridge these energy qualities and to link them together. And this type of resonance can be established between similar shapes, similar sounds, similar movements, etc. However, we need to also understand that in this Egyptian science we can also link together not only similar shapes, sounds, etc., but a shape with a sound, a sound with a color, a color with an angle, etc. We can link together all of these powerful qualities in resonance. The other very important thing to understand is the concept of harmonics, which we're going to simply describe very simply here as being the way that particular energies will reappear time and again at higher and higher levels, at higher and higher spectrums. So if we look at this in terms of musical theory, if we look at a piano keyboard, we have the seven notes of the musical scale from C up through B, and then C reappears. Then you have the seven uh, notes of the musical scale repeated, and then they repeat again and again and again. Now, these seven are energy qualities, and so those energy qualities repeat again and again and again on the piano keyboard. And there's a particular resonant link between C at one octave and C at the next. So harmonics is the way that we understand with Egyptian biogeometry that we can connect energy qualities between something here in the physical world and something in a higher world. There are things here on the physical plane that we can use to go into resonance with the higher harmonic of gold, for example. In fact, that's one reason why in the ancient mysteries they would coat so many things with metallic gold, because the metal gold itself is a kind of lower octave of the higher harmonic of gold. Physical gold is a, uh, has the same energy quality on a lower level as the higher harmonic of gold energy quality at the divine level, from the plane of divine wisdom. So there's a very deep aspect of this we go into a lot of detail on in the training that has to do with how you create linkages between things using resonance and harmonics to connect something here to something at a higher level so they vibrate together. And we can bring those divine energy qualities and anchor them here on the physical plane. Now for this work in level two, it's vital that the student be able to directly detect and know for themselves the presence or absence of these vital energy qualities. So one tool that we use is what the French developed and called the virtual cone pendulum. We won't go into all the details of it, but basically what the virtual cone pendulum is, is it's got a central rod that marks out the 12 different energy bands, and then it has a disc that moves up and down on the rod to different levels. According to where you sit the disc on the rod, you get different angles from the base of the rod to the lower edge of the disc. And those angles then correlate to the different qualities of energy. It's similar 
to what you find with the refraction of white light in a prism, where the angle of refraction will give you both the quality of the color of the light as well as the quantitative wavelength of the light. So in other words, by being able to move this pendulum to its different levels, we can then select the specific energy quality we're looking for and find if it is present or absent and if it is present in what intensity. So all students learn to use this for very practical means. Now in the application of this knowledge in level two, one very important thing that we learn is what in biogeometry we refer to either as geometric alchemy or as energy alchemy, transforming detrimental energies to beneficial. This is a cartoon by Ibrahim Karim that shows the way that the alchemist in the transmutation of let's say lead into gold of a physical substance into a different physical substance is actually able to then work with these energy qualities that we're describing like the higher harmonic of gold to such a degree they can create a physical transmutation of the element. Now that type of work takes a long time and a very thorough training and from Dr. Karim's perspective that transmutation of the metal into gold is a kind of graduation exercise for someone who has gone very deeply into this body of work. However, with Egyptian biogeometry, we can do this type of alchemical transmutation at an energy level in a way that people can learn within the seven days of the foundation training itself. Everyone who leaves the seven days of the training is able to create these types of energy alchemical transmutations so that the energies in a particular space for a person, etc., can now be full of the BG3. And so it can have what the Egyptians refer to as the quality of the gold energy present at all times. And there's deeper spiritual aspects of this as well, where the person's heart connects to the plane of divine wisdom, the heart connects to the pineal gland, etc. But it goes beyond our discussion in this short introduction. So one way that we apply this knowledge of energy alchemy is to transmute detrimental energies to beneficial. So I'll give you two examples of things that we really focus on in the foundation training to give people practical skills. One is that it's well known to people in dowsing circles and there have in fact been multiple scientific studies done primarily in Austria and Germany since the 1930s that show that there are particular lines of energy on the surface of the earth that where these lines of energy cross these are detrimental energy lines that are referred to as geopathic or toxic earth energy lines or zones and where these toxic earth lines cross you have a very detrimental energy formed at their crossing. So what we have here is an illustration from a European text showing that where the lines cross the tree that is positioned there has something like a cancerous tumor from the detrimental energy it is exposed to. And the German studies beginning in the 1930s showed the exact same thing was true for human beings. That when human beings sleep over these toxic energy crossings, that they also will develop tumors, cancer, various types of disease and illness, just the way that we see it on the tree. And so it's very important to be able to find a way to detect these toxic lines and to work with them. Now, in most forms of uh, dowsing, in North America and Europe today, they try to block the lines. But the Egyptians, and what we do in biogeometry, we approach it differently. We don't try to block the lines. Instead, we have enough knowledge to be able to keep the line running. And often these lines run in these particular types of squared off grids, known as the Hartmann grid, or the Curry grid, or the Benker grid, all named after the German researchers who discovered them. Instead of blocking them, we keep them running because the Egyptians believe that these are like uh, the lines of energy through which the Earth's own energy circulates. And we wouldn't want to block a circulation of an energy meridian in the human body, and so we wouldn't want to do it on the Earth either. But we do need to transmute the quality of energy. In any sacred power spot on the planet, the energy present there is the BG3. So using biogeometry techniques, we teach students in level two how to detect these toxic energy lines and how to transmute them to the BG3. So that instead of a grid of toxic energy running through their home that they're desperately trying to get their beds, desks, etc. off of, we actually can transmute that energy to create a grid of gold.